Howdy! All aboard for episode 2 of The Last Caboose. Today we are continuing our playthrough of Transport Fever 2 on a map I created depicting the eastern edge of the Canadian Rockies. Before we get going, I would like to make a few corrections from the last episode. Now I am new to this, so don't fault me badly, but I got several historical dates wrong and I apologize for that. Firstly, I repeatedly stated throughout the last episode that the CPR arrived in Calgary in 1881. The correct date is 1883. This does give us a few more years to make some more money before we take our full loan out and gamble on the iron horse. Secondly, I said that Calgary was incorporated in 1881. Wrong again. The town of Calgary incorporated in 1882 with few over 200 inhabitants but by 1881 it had reached a population of nearly 4,000, the power of the railroad. Well, let's get into today's episodes. We are sitting here at the Calgary Farm Number 2, because it shares one of the first stories of European settlements in the area. Sam Livingston settled in the Calgary area in 1873, two years before the Northwest Mounted Police established Fort Calgary. Sam and a partner, John Glenn, started to work the land in 1876, cultivating oats, wheat, and barley. John Glenn moved to the region around the same time as Sam Livingston, but chose to settle on the confluence of the Bow River and the Fish Creek, right where Calgary Farm No. 2 is placed. So let's rename the farm and get into managing our small wagon company. So yeah, here we are, Calgary Farm No. 2. And I think we'll change that to John Glenn's Settlement. Well, John Glenn's Ranch. And let's change the name of Calgary West to uh, John Glenn's Trading Post. Now, John Glenn actually uh, traveled quite a bit into Montana um, and uh, would pick up supplies on a regular basis uh, from the time in 1873. Now, there wasn't an established route going back to eastern Canada, but the Americans had quite a few uh, paths. They had an intercontinental railroad at this time, so they were much more connected, and it was quite easy to travel south into America and pick up supplies when you were out here in western Canada at the time. Uh, the Northwest Territories as it was known then and uh, so he would actually travel down one to two times a year pick up many supplies and goods and bring them up and uh, it was actually him and a few other guys set up a log cabin at the confluence of the uh, the Bow and Fish Creek and set up a, one of the first trading posts of the region so I guess we could consider one of the buildings in here, or uh, maybe later on in the episode I'll build a small trading post down, maybe a little bit further or a little bit closer to the river. But that's some interesting. Now, I think what we uh, planned to do at the end of last episode, we did get our stagecoach line from Calgary to Airdrie and to the south to Okotoks. Now nobody is riding it yet. Um, and I realize this could be to a, due to a couple of factors. If we look, I think I placed most of our buildings, our bus stops, right in the middle of the residential areas. Now this one happens to capture residential, industrial, and commercial areas in Calgary. I believe Airdrie probably does the same and Okotoks the same, but mainly I placed them in the middle of residential areas. Now the mechanics of Transport Fever 2 don't take residents from residence uh, to residence house. So people aren't visiting their friends, they're going to work or they're going shopping. So having a bus route from a residential area to a residential area will not be profitable. So I think we'll give this uh, stagecoach line a few years to, to settle in. Uh, if it does not settle in, I think we'll uh, change it up. Eventually I will be having proper bus routes to the cities to a proper terminal and from that terminal we'll continue on in the stagecoach line intercity but uh, for now let's just see if this works it's just kind of an experiment so what it's all about is testing out seeing what the game mechanics are capable of so I think 
what we notice here is uh, we were looking at the line rates and right now we have a maximum production of 100 and to achieve 100 I need to be supplying 200 uh, from John Glenn's ranch right here and uh, if we look at our line rate our line statistics see what we can see if we look at Calgary grain haulage we have a rate of 121 so we could boost that up um, get a few more trucks on there and start producing some more bread to take into the city now if you can see some of our finished product here bread is starting to stack up and uh, that means that's money sitting on our cargo platforms and not sitting in our bank account so I think what I want to do is add a few vehicles now the thing to do here is not to have a knee-jerk reaction and double or triple the capacity of the line I think what I'm going to do is possibly and well let's actually take a look at the line statistics now right now the line statistics it says we have a rate of 26 Calgary is demanding 25 so we should be able to meet the uh, the rate but you know what it's always good practice Calgary is going to continually demand more and more so I think just in the interest of not having to come back and do this every five minutes I'm going to copy two more vehicles onto that line and let's hope that that beds us in for a few more episodes or possibly until halfway through this episode. Now if we go up here to the Cochrane Grain Farm we have a huge conga line of horse and buggies going back and forth back and forth collecting logs. Uh, let's look at the line statistics on this. Now it has a rate of 108. Uh, I do believe that the forest supply 400 and this will have a production rate of 200 to begin with. So I think we could maximize this production. I know we're not shipping any of the, uh, the midway product here which happens to be planks, uh, but I think if we can maximize it because I think the way I'm looking at this is our first route, our first train route on this map is going to be bringing logs from Cochrane down into the tools factory in, uh, in Calgary and I want to bring those tools back into Cochrane. Um, now they don't share the same wagons or anything like that on the train so it might require two trains which might require extra money and so on and so forth but I think that that's a great beginnings and if we can start to maximize that route right uh, I think that would be great so if we're looking at this what did we say for line statistics we had 108 so we need to double <laughs> the road vehicles which would bring us to 80 vehicles which is kind of astronomical so I think let's just let that settle in and uh, see what we can see there. Uh, I know I doubled them right before the end of the last episode and uh, I think that it would be a little bit wild to go any further. Now we can start bringing food up into Airdrie or we can start bringing food down into Okotoks. Now I think Okotoks is a little bit shorter of a journey Airdrie is quite a long ways because we'd have to come all the way down although that being said we could sneak a road up through Ogden which this is what this part of Calgary is called now is Ogden and we could sneak a road up through there and join up there and uh, shorten that journey and have the amount of vehicles on this chunk of the road right here. Now I know these are just stagecoaches at this point, but the road could get busy and uh, I'd like to keep it as less busy as possible. So I think what we do is we can set up two new lines. So let's get that road built um, heading up into Airdrie and then we can set up a line to Airdrie and then set up a line to Okotoks. So let's turn on our curvy and let's kind of follow the lay of the land because in the 1800s they didn't just plow through uh, hills they went around them so I think it's generally flat here and if 
we can see we are going to come up into this coolie here and we can follow this coolie around come around this plastic plant that uh, let's just say for the sake of uh, pretend we don't see right now and doesn't exist oh boy we are out of money already so I think what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to speed this up a bit let's put this on ultra fast speed get these horses running and uh, see if we can make some money while we're setting up a line here so let's set up our new line now I think what I'm gonna do is set up a second truck stop here just because simply we don't have the room here now do I have the money to do this that's the next question uh, if I go here I do have the money and it is all of my money oh now I don't so I think if we go here and well, I think we just need one platform. Wrong side. I always get the wrong side. Left and right, right and left. You know. And if we can figure this, and we just add a little bit more space, it is a long journey. There we go. And I think that should be good I what I am gonna do is I am gonna share this platform here for picking up the food and sending it on to Okotoks and then use this platform here and head that off to Airdrie so let's set up our line to Airdrie oh you know what we haven't done we need to put in a drop station in Airdrie now this right here is gonna collect most of them Again, we are very short on funds, so I'm not too worried about having the horses turn around in an awkward manner. I am just simply trying to get this set up. Same with here, although if I put our drop here, they may turn around in a logical manner. And so, now we can finally set up the line. Okay, line one is actually going to be a food color go with a little bit lighter orange I uh, don't like that one that's the one that's the one and we're gonna go from Calgary to Airdrie and come on there we go that has happened to be line two and I will set that up in the same food color as well and we will call this Airdrie food for delivery of food delivery and line one here we are going to set up here and have it deliver into Okotoks now I gotta zoom in to actually find this truck stop sometimes if you can't click on it the first time just zoom in it becomes more accurate uh, so oak oak uh, okotoks food delivery and there we go now we do have some money in our bank so we are making money so just simply waiting for that little bit of time we are making money that's uh, good news let's buy us some vehicles we know that these carry food and I think each one if I buy 10 what's that three hundred and twenty six thousand dollars I cannot afford it but let's wait until I can and let's set these on to Airdrie food delivery what I want to do is do the exact same thing we're gonna buy 10 and we're gonna send them off to Okotoks so we may go further into the red before we go into the green here um, now Sam Livingston is a 
huge importance to the Calgary area. He uh, he settled while we wait for some cash here. Let's talk about that. He settled in what is now the Glenmore Reservoir. So uh, when Calgary built a dam on the Elbow River uh, in the 1930s, they flooded most of his homestead and uh, they actually moved uh, his home up into a heritage park which is a real life working heritage village in Calgary and the Glenmore Reservoir if you strain your eyes really closely you can see a flat body of water here and here and that's where it is so the dam is actually where the Elbow River ends at this point and heritage park sits here now Sam Livingston's uh, plot of land would have sat throughout this whole area. They did have fairly massive chunks of land uh, when they settled here. Obviously, there was no one other than the Indians uh, or First Nations people at the time uh, to contend with for land. And since land was in such abundance, the natives weren't too worried about the first few people to come here. Now, their story does get a little more complicated as time goes on. But when Sam got here, he had a very nice working relationship with the local First Nations, uh, probably trading. Uh, the First Nations were helping him get through winters, things that he'd never seen before, Sam had never seen before. But uh, yeah, so his, his plot of land would have been here. And he was the original settler in the Calgary area, and he is infamous in Calgary. So it is uh, quite quite a fun story now like I was saying we're gonna send that first train up to Cochrane to pick up uh, pick up goods there now originally when the railroad came into Calgary it came in from the east from Montreal Toronto uh, on to over North uh, Shore Superior onto Winnipeg Winnipeg through Saskatchewan and up into Calgary and it would have come in right about here um, in present-day Calgary and would have swept up through this part and then into here this part of Calgary is known as Inglewood and it would have had um, a big freight yard in here so I think I'm I'm trying I'm really hoping the AI doesn't build on these roads that it's starting to claim now I could lock them but I'm also interested in growing Calgary as big as I can because in five six years time i'm going to destroy probably half of the city to punch the railroad through it so i would like to uh, get calgary as large as possible prior to doing that um but i'm thinking what i'm going to do is set up a large freight station in here a freight uh, exchange in here that would service calgary and have lines that turn to the north and lines that go to the east but that line that goes to the east we're gonna fudge it a little bit and we're going to send and have another freight terminal right over here now in present-day Calgary these are called the Ogden Yards and now in the Ogden Yards is where they produce locomotives in present-day Calgary uh, for the current CPR and I think we're gonna have another representation of the Ogden Yards here and it this is a pipe dream, but I would like to be able to shunt material, so deliver to here, and then shunt the material over to here to feed these factories. Um, it would be interesting just to have a small shunter <laughs> working back and forth, just to see what it would look like, see if it can work as well. Um, I've never seen it attempted on any of my uh, YouTube um, uh, watching, so oh, look at that the first person that we have in Calgary riding our stagecoach line. Who are you? We have Allison Morgan. Oh, and we have Brooke Scott also waiting. We have Mary Martinez. Look at that. It is starting to become popular. It's probably not frequent. In fact, <laughs> let's take a peek at that. Oh, let's slow this down to two speed. And let's... Uh, look at making some money <laughs> first let's get 10 vehicles onto that Okotoks line there we go now with that Okotoks line let's make sure that it is in the t same terminal as the Green Haulage 
that way the drop off and the two pickup or the two pickups are separated the drop off can share a spot uh, for now or in fact our best idea at this point is why don't I bring a small road out like this oh <laughs> or not let us wait until we make some more money now it seems like we're in the red quite a bit but in all honesty it uh, it will start to snowball uh, very shortly after we start to put trains on the map I am only playing a medium uh, difficulty which is not easy but it is certainly not hard in hard mode you have to be on top of everything there is no wastage uh, until you get the game really going whereas in medium mode you can uh, you can account for some fun times now I wonder if assets are free to place so let's see do we have any assets um, like an era a we're gonna look for a trading post so that is that's kind of a little trading post hey now I feel like a trading post is a little bit wider a little bit longer than it is wide excellent and let's see if we can get the door okay so the back of it there's the door now John Glenn's trading post was a log cabin and this certainly is not a log cabin but I think just for now and just for the sake of it we'll go like that and let's get a little fence around it I think he would have used probably one of these now we've got a line on oh fences do cost us money so that's fine that's fine we can get the fence in in a bit but you know what doesn't cost any money paint so let's get some gravel in let's take that brush size right on down uh, let's get some dirt in actually and let's just get him a path all points we can have the path heading in all directions at this point petering out people would have come in to this trading post they would have come in along the river Sam would have probably taken a boat down the elbow or down the fish creek he would have probably taken a canoe um, natives would have come maybe bought bullets for their rifles newly acquired from their tradings uh, the recent tradings at the Fort Calgary so I mean, that just adds a little bit of realism here okay now back to changing up this and let's get a drop in and uh, let's see in terms of this we could put the drop right here but what I want to do is just to make them turn around a little bit nicer on their own little street let's put the drop here we go like this and we say boom drop off see how it's starting to really load up here so let's manage the line let's pause we're going to take out Calgary sidings and we're going to put in Highland Street and then we're going to say unpause see how it's really lining up here and this happens especially at the beginning of any route they seem to pause and I, I have not if somebody can tell me in the comments why the very first time a truck arrives at a truck station they pause for way longer than they've ever paused and ever will pause unless you tell them to it seems like an odd mechanic um, um, maybe it's just them working out their route uh, I'm not entirely sure either way it's just something that constantly happens now we can see that the food is really piling up here on the airdrie uh, annex which is nice and we are slowed down by no nope, we're not slowed down by anything all of everything has a speed limit or a maximum speed of 20 kilometers per hour so everything is moving along nicely now at this time in Canada we would have been using miles per hour uh, I can go ahead and change that um, however I don't see the point uh, my brain thinks in kilometers an hour I do know miles per hour being Canadian kind of are forced to know both um, 
due to the Americans' unwillingness to change to a base 10 system. Uh, be it on them, it's much harder to change 300 million people than it was to change the, I think, 24, 25 million people that lived in Canada in the 70s when Canada decided to change over to the metric system. Uh, but anyway, that's a side note. Uh, now, we're just kind of building money, and we need to build more money because, like I said, it's going to be so very expensive <laughs> to get through Calgary. Uh, right now, we've got to demolish pretty much this. I was looking at it at the end of last episode, and I estimated just by if you can take your bulldozer and hover it over, it's going to cost 475700 so that's a million dollars. Then another million, so it's two million. So I figured it was going to be about one and a half million dollars. But now we're looking at least two to probably three million dollars just to get out of Calgary with the train. So this could be quite expensive. Um, there might be, at the end of this episode, a little break until the next episode until I can build up some money. Um, what I like to do is I like to pause and I like to start exactly where I've left off and leave you guys with no gap. Um, I even pause it uh, or I even save the game as soon as I'm finished our cab rides and that's where we pick off from. But uh, I think maybe on this episode I'll just cheese it for you a little bit so you're not sitting through the pain of just watching me watch my bank account go up and down. Um, it certainly does both. Oh, look, we've got a bear. Now, there still are quite a few bears in uh, the Bow Valley area. In fact, Banff uh, National Park has recently reported a, quite a surge in uh, grizzly bear population, which is excellent because they have been on endangered species list uh, in the eastern slopes of the Rockies for quite some time. So it is positive news that our uh, conservation efforts are working uh, in the national parks in Alberta. Uh, that being said, I've seen a few in the wild and um, they're lovely creatures and I hope never to come across one face to face. They are certainly large and scary. I'm sure we've all seen that Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio uh, scene where he gets mauled by a bear and if you haven't, um, I don't know, wasn't my favorite movie so I don't recommend it but maybe it's yours. Who knows? Everyone has different tastes, and that's what makes the world great. So I think what we're going to do is set this guy up, just simply because it's here, it's easy, and if we can make some money doing it. Now, I don't like the asphalt um, that they give us. I was trying to change it all. Um, obviously, I've missed some <coughs> prior to putting it in the... Uh, or taking it out of the uh, map editor, but uh, you don't always win. Now let's see. Now my my raspy know it, <laughs> my raspy voice, and my snuggery uh, nose do have a bit of a cold. My daughter brought <laughs> brought home cold from daycare right before Christmas, and uh, so I'm still suffering the lingering effects from that. But uh, we do know it is not the old pandemic COVID so that's saving grace and here we go so now we are in there and I think what we're going to do is again just what I like to call dead drop these instead of dropping them in a terminal station I'd like to put them in here and let's just set up our typical uh, truck station up here it's gonna cost us 50 to some odd thousand dollars just to get that I would like to get it longer so we're gonna wait for a few seconds oh again having problems finding my keys again <laughs> that happens so <laughs> we're just we are hampered by money right now. So I think, why don't we just turn that right back up to three speed, wait for that money to pour in. Now we could change the date speed, uh, but again, we need that money to pour in as much as possible. So 
So, ah, perfect. We are at $115,000 and shrinking and growing and growing and shrinking. So let's configure this. Uh, yeah, definitely. We're working on that right now. <laughs> we're just waiting for money. We're waiting for money, game. Just give us a few minutes. So here in the, uh, the foothills of the Canadian Rockies, um, mainly the industry is logging. Now it is conservation and logging. Um, but it is some of the most beautiful hiking lands. Uh, and it has some of the greatest biking trails, hiking trails, cross-country ski trails in the winter. It is really a fantastic place to grow up. Yeah, we're still working on it, game. Just uh, hold your horses. <laughs> uh, actually, not literally, though. We need those horses to keep going. What is all of a sudden we are not making very much money? And we were making good money before, so I think that there might be something a little bit broken with our network. I am wondering. Yeah, we are starting to bleed money. Let us see what is happening here. So that is filling up. This is filling up with the Calgary food delivery. You know what is not keeping up? I bet you. Let's find out. Let's go into our vehicle. Our vehicle, our line manager. Hmm, there we go. So the Prairie Express is a very expensive system. It only is 50% full and it is not making us any money. Okotoks food delivery will make us money eventually. And so will oh, the Calgary food delivery should be making us money, but it's not because the Jack Care, the uh, Calgary Green Hodge is not keeping up. So I bet you that that's what's uh, holding us back right now. Yeah, that Prairie Express, it's just a, a major hit on our books right now. But it is important to have that movement between towns because, as you can see here, our destinations, if we give them more destinations, you get a little population boost. And so now our target population is 104. We have 98 residents. I believe we started with 46 in Calgary. So we've doubled the size of Calgary just by simply taking some food and doing those kind of things. So think maybe we have enough money we are kind of hovering around making some more money uh, I think the, the brightest idea at this point just to ensure that we're gonna make that money is let's go down into here take the Calgary Grain Haulage we're gonna manage the line and by manage the line we are going to go go back we're gonna manage the vehicle and we're gonna add five vehicles on there there we go and those five vehicles are just gonna help us make a little bit more money make a little bit more food and maybe maybe this uh, see this food delivery here is just a little bit low and I think it's just because we're oversupplied here now what we could do here is we could let's look at the statistics so our Calgary food delivery has a line rate of 36. Now Calgary is demanding 32. Okay, so really we're we're meeting everything. I think you know what? I think we'd be premature to take some covered wagons off of one line and put them onto another. So there we go. Here are our new uh, horse co or, uh, covered wagons down to pick up some more grain and. Maybe we can finally finish this last one here. And if we can figure here, yeah, go up there. And now let's see if we can pop on. And we really want to build trains. I know everybody comes here, and I would like to build trains just as badly as everybody else. But to get a good start, we want to be able to cover a full cost of a loan, $100,000 a year just in trucking industry 
Oh, it's a little bit of an odd curly cue. Let's see if we can delete that back and that back. Let's let's see if we can make this a little fancy. This really, we got the time. We're just trying to make some money. Uh, here we go. Oh, look at that. Ooh, ooh, I like that a lot. That looks quite good. Now we can slide that into here. Maybe even make it go around the corner, nice and straight. Now because we have no one-way roads, we'll just put a waypoint there. And now a depot. Now if we get a road depot. Now you'll see me place these all over the map. And I will do that until time in memoriam. Because road depots, you can't have too many of them. But I think in this game, I want to stay true to form and oh, let's build a line for here and just have my uh, depot in the Ogden Yards in Calgary. That's the only place I want locomotives and trains to come out of. Um, I don't want to place multiple ones. There's no real need to because I plan to have a main line uh, essentially uh, through the Bow Valley with a couple of side feeders down to the south and up to the north to pick up the industry goods uh, but really I'm going to be trying to truck most things to the main line and then move it along quickly along the main line so I think uh, I think it's an enti entirely achievable goal I didn't name that line uh, let's see we will call this Bragg Creek that's the name of a small artisan town uh, that exists out in uh, west of Calgary. It's a lovely place. I spent many a day hiking. Uh, notably enough, uh, Tommy Chong from Cheech and Chong uh, lives just uh, west of Bragg Creek now. So uh, there you go. Fun fact. I have met Tommy Chong uh, on a few occasions in the grocery store and at the gas stations out there while I was picking up a Gatorade on my way out to bike and I don't think he was picking up Gatorade so anyway let's buy some side steaks now they are 32,000 piece 10 would cost me way too much 5 would cost me way too much so let's just get 4 on because we have infrastructure here and we need to start making it pay for itself. So there's no point not having any vehicles on it. Uh, if you build a road in Transport Fever 2, you're paying the maintenance on that road. So if we go into here and we look at road and we see maintenance on roads, you can see that it is steadily climbing uh, throughout these financial years. I just did air quotes, obviously you can't see those, but quote unquote um, financial years because we have the date set to quarter speed, it's every 48 minutes for one year to go by, but every 12 minutes one of these financial years will end. So it, con it confuses me and gets me every time for some reason, I'm not entirely sure why, but let's just keep... Uh, Let's just keep copying these. Yeah, let's clone those. Let's get eight onto there. And then I think what I want to do is uh, get four more on. So once I get 130,000 again, and then I think we'll call it good on there. Just, uh, just to make this somewhat profitable. Let's see what's going on. There we go. Boom. Now, it looks like we're back in profit back here on the grain haulage. But now what you can see is it's getting so busy here. Uh, we've got horses turning here and horses turning there. Uh, there's really nothing we can do for that. Um, not at this point in the game. Then we have no traffic that's going through. We could make slip roads and things like that, but really it's 1878. Are we spending thousands of dollars on a highway infrastructure? No. Uh, we're just... We're also watching this at three speed, so it, it looks crazy and congested, but if, if we slow this down to a, a normal slow pace, these guys aren't going to get in any carriage accidents anytime soon. Um, 
So look at that. Our stagecoach line is actually starting to pick up. I wonder how many people are waiting here. We have 14 people. I'm not entirely sure what a stagecoach takes. I think it's five. Let's go. Let's see. The American stagecoach has capacity of five people. And we have people here in Airdrie waiting as well. So that's good. That's good. How many do we have here? We have one. <laughs> one person waiting. I wonder if those stagecoaches have spread out. They don't seem to have spread out that much. We seem to have a whole conga line of them heading down now to Calgary. And do we have any heading down? Yeah, we've got a few on the way back from Okotoks right now. So uh, they're kind of starting to spread themselves out. It will take time. The game does separate um, passenger vehicles and freight vehicles uh, according to... Um, line rates and things like that but it does take time it just it does not happen and i'm not entirely sure how it does it because i've never seen a, a vehicle travel slower than its maximum speed unless you have a speed restricted set of tracks or something like that so i'm i don't know you can also i mean i could hold up some stage coaches and let them go through or take some and turn them and head them back up to airdrie at this point but uh you know what i think i'm just gonna trust in the game and see what is going to come of it now I do really think that uh, oh yeah we do have our construction material so yeah we will get first stop is we're gonna put uh, on our um, on a railroad is gonna be here in Cochrane and we're going to put a uh, freight terminal in here in Cochrane. I think probably right along here, right? The, the Bow River is going to come and sweep around and Cochrane, the train line is going to turn as tightly as possible here. So if we had uh, the ability, we would turn and it's going to turn very quickly right there. And that's what it does in real life. And that's going to come and straighten out. We'll probably put a, a freight terminal in there. And then uh, we'll continue our freight line out and we'll cross back over the Bow River here on our uh, train line and follow it along, get down into Morley Flats here and go across the Morley Flats. And uh, then I would love to pick up some uh, construction materials because you know what? that's going to grow Cochrane and Cochrane actually might because we're supplying it with everything it needs right off the bat might actually grow quicker than Calgary uh, but we'll uh, we'll have to see maybe it won't because we have such an interconnected field here between Okotoks, Airdrie and Calgary who's to say uh, we could bring Turner Valley into the mix um, but I'm a little hesitant like I said I would just love to make as much money as possible um, right now because <laughs> the, it's kind of a blessing and a curse right now because I need Calgary to grow but I also don't want Calgary to grow where it is because it's just going to cost me more money to try and get out of this city with the railroad now railroad is going to be our next episode so um, I hope to advance in time I think I'll uh, I will leave this game running between episodes and make it as uh, make as much money as possible between now and 1883 and then I'll pause the uh, date in 1883 on January 1st and we will start constructing our railway and we'll actually get a caboose ride so if there's anything else we can do I think we can probably let's check on the line rate here for the grain haulage let's see we got 147 and this produces 200 right now if we click on here and we see the consumers we have 27 24 and 23 so there's no need to upgrade this whatsoever in fact if we look at our overview we are you know what there is a, definitely a need to oh <laughs> wow okay never mind let us try and upgrade this uh, this plant this food production plant let's throw three more of these on here 
And then let's just check out our platforms and see who's not being supplied enough. And here it is, Airdrie Food Delivery. We could probably, just because of the length of the trip, throw two more on there. And if we look here, the Okotoks Food Delivery has six sitting on the platform and Calgary has four. Now Okotoks, I think I'm just gonna add one more just because again of the length of the line so I think it's kind of handy to have and uh, so now we've got those guys coming out servicing the line and it is still crazy let's see Did that adjust our line rate what we're really looking for here is a line rate of 200 and uh, we haven't got there yet but I think throwing vehicle after vehicle especially it's really starting to get crowded in here uh, it's not that bad to tell you the truth how's this going um, you know what it has did it upgrade no it already has upgraded it just did well what do you know what do you know I'll have to actually go back and watch the playthrough. I'm a little bit mystified that I've upgraded that industry already, but there you go. How fancy is that? Um, well, I think that that is going to bring us to the end of this episode, and I would love to take a ride on this stagecoach here that is heading north out over the uh, Bow River. So. I think instead of going at Mach, <laughs> Mach 5 on these horses' heads, that I would slow us down and let's take us down to a normal speed, speed 1, and let's join us as we head up over the Bow River on our way to Airdrie. And next time out, we'll be looking forward to some trains as Calgary will be in 1883 and the CPR is going to be coming to town. Thanks so much for watching, and until we see you next time, have a great evening.